breakups, reunions, and demon Viagra. CW's Charmed, Season 1, Episode 17, Review and Breakdown. Hey Twisted People, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here, and today I am doing a review and breakdown of CW's Charmed, Season 1, Episode 17, Surrender. So, if you're new here, this is the way I do it. I give my overall thoughts of the episode, as in my overall thoughts of the episode, the happenings, as in what happened in the episode, and my thoughts on that, ship talk, because I do love talking about relationships, my favorite line of the episode, and finally, my predictions. So overall, this was a pretty decent episode. It wasn't as epic as maybe last episode or the episode before that, the whole, you know, two-parter with Charity. This episode felt more like a means to an end, particularly the demon. You know, he kind of easy come, easy go. And in a way, he kind of served a purpose for a variety of other storylines to be set up. And that was fine. I thought it was decent. I thought it set up some things for the future. It's not my favorite episode of the season, but it definitely had some poignant moments in it. And it was cool to see, you know, the sisters connection with Harry and what's going on with Fiona. So that definitely set that up. So I, I thought it was overall a solid episode. Viralis and his demon Viagra. I don't think I'm going to get over the phrase demon Viagra at all, ever. So basically women are missing and one of them escapes from the place they were taken to and finds Nico. Nico in turn connects with Mel. Mel of course jumps at the chance even though she's in denial about it to go over to Nico's house and basically find out what Nico needs. Mel, Nico, and the young woman that escaped basically talk, and Nico thinks it has something to do with the Circana, and Mel, of course, does not believe that's the case, but she does think it's something very weird with these women missing and this other thing with the young woman that escaped. When the Charmed Ones look into it deeper, they find out that it's a demon named Viralis who has a tendency or a ritual to basically sacrifice a number of women every couple of years in order to keep his life going, aka, as Mel calls it, Demon Viagra. Maggie comes up with a not-so-foolproof plan in order to infiltrate Viralis by doing a spoken word poem or whatever uh, at the cafe on campus in order to get taken to the place where he's keeping the women so that she can also get his blood because she needs that for Parker. And of course, Maggie ends up under Viralis' spell and the other two sisters have to go and save her with the help of an aging Harry. There's a face-off between Mel and a possessed Maggie, once again, reinforcing how well these sisters know how to fight. Oh my gosh, they are such good combat fighters. And because Macy is basically the only one left, she has to face off with Viralis, and she eventually slays him by having the dagger go into his nether regions. The possession is lifted off of Maggie once Viralis is slayed, and they are also able to get Viralis's because he's a full demon. They are able to get his blood in order for Maggie to give that to Parker, which I'll get into in my other happenings talk. So yeah, like I said, this was an okay plot line. It wasn't, you know, significant to anything in particular. It was kind of like a monster demon of the week kind of plot line in order to, I felt, to push forward other plot lines that are going on, like in particular Nico's reemergence in Mel's life, Mel's conflicting feelings, the whole thing with her and Jada, and what was going on with that, other situations in terms of Fiona following the girls as she's trying to get at Harry, another happening that I'll get into in a moment. So it was really kind of, like I said, a demon of the week sort of thing. It didn't seem like it connected to anything at all. It was kind of a demon come, demon go sort of a deal. We got some laughs in it though with the really bad spoken word poetry. I get so cringeworthy when people do spoken word. I don't go to those things. I mean, I think when it's done well, it's done well, but I feel like they did a great job of showing what happens when it's done horribly. And then also we got a revelation when it comes to Maggie and her deepest kind of wants and desires. Not anything that was like totally, oh my gosh, you would have never guessed that. It was more so to do with the fact that, you know, people have died in her life. And of course, that'll, that will bring anyone some sort of trauma in a way to be very fearful and have anxiety about losing others. And that's what, you know, in this episode, Maggie and others were going through with Harry and what Maggie is going through with Parker. Parker's demon infection. 
So basically, Maggie gets the blood from Viralis, and she's able to give it to Dr. Julius, Mark Parker's mother, and she has been administering the demon blood, and of course, it is not pretty. And we see, one, Dr. Julius is like, you probably don't want to see him right now, Maggie. And then we do see him, the audience, as Dr. Julius goes in there, and he is like full-blown friggin' monster demon. There wasn't much Parker in this episode or his plot line. It was more so Maggie kind of reflecting on, you know, going out with a demon and what that means and Parker's stakes. And I thought that that was a good reminder of, of the danger involved because I think, and I've said this before when it comes to Parker and Maggie, that sometimes because they're so cute, because they're so sweet with each other and you sort of think, oh, he just needs to get the cure and he'll be fine. You don't feel the danger when it comes to their relationship. So you're kind of like, well, how long is it, can this plot line go? And I think this particular moment, especially us seeing him full-blown demon, kind of reinforced the idea that this is serious, that he could very well go over to the dark side, that everything isn't on course to have a happily ever after for the two of them. And I thought that was good to kind of reinforce that, particularly for their plot line. Harry. So the elders, oh my gosh, the elders, basically do some haphazard trial of Harry and strip him of his powers. And because he stripped up his powers of a white lighter, one of the powers was, you know, immortality in a way. And so he starts to age rapidly, pretty much approaching death, because he would be like 98 if he, you know, was not a white lighter. Mel and the other sisters go to defend him in front of the elders. Mel pretty much forces their hand at the bar to make it so that they go to see them. And Mel gives a great case of you don't get to just not communicate with us when you take away our white light or our protector because we're the most powerful witches and you guys are treating us like children. Of course, the elders don't care. One in particular, oh my gosh, she was so annoying this episode. She was just like all up on her high horse where she was just telling Mel, like, girl, no, you don't know anything. And then basically dismisses them. Mel then goes to Jada telling Jada that, you know, Harry wants to see Fiona because of their connection. And she also asked Jada to somehow see if the Circana can help Harry. Jada is not forthcoming in that endeavor, even though Mel is her girlfriend and, you know, emotional ties of wanting your partner to be happy she basically says no that harry has been a lap dog pretty much for the elder so why should she help him this of course causes a fight for her and you know mel and they break up which i'll get to in my ship talk but yeah that happens and then throughout the episode, Fiona had been following the girls around because she overheard Mel and Jada's conversation. And it seems as though she wants to get something out of Harry's mind that maybe Harry doesn't even know is in his mind. So she's trying to get something out of him. And she eventually offers the charm Ones and Harry a chance to cure him. And she gives the excuse of, I want the charm Ones to be in my debt. But we soon see that it's probably another reason why she needs Harry. And she tries to get into his mind and it doesn't really work after she cures him of course he gets to go back to his age but then they disappear and go somewhere and who knows where they go whoa like fiona is a force not to be reckoned with to be honest with you because i mean she was kind of on like level 11 this episode i really like this actress when it comes to how she has this sort of sure and confident subtle power under her and it's not necessarily like straight out sinister or evil there's just something like she's on her own path her own crusade whether that's good or bad who knows but she's very sure of it and she's not going to let anyone get her in her way which was very very evident when she basically told Jada do you know what I could do to you like yeah Jada had to bounce also, you know, screw the elders. I'm I'm kind of over them at this point. They have gotten to, you know, we're seeing that they are so used to having power that it's just kind of like screw the little people to them or screw the people who aren't in charge. And it's kind of funny because, you know, Mel straight up says, look, we're the most powerful witches, so why are we even listening to you? We want our white lighter back. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the Circana are actually on the best path either, as we saw in this episode where Jada did not want to help Mel at all. And also Fiona, I don't know what she's up to, but I don't think it's on the up and up. Mel and Jada. So they broke up. 
yeah, that happened. You know, I felt like that was a little contrived. I mean, I'm not saying that I would think that it was out of character for Jada to refuse to help Mel because she did say, she was like, you know, there's a war happening and you need to pick who's on your side and which side you are on. And I think, you know, that forced Mel to think, well, maybe I'm not like you. Not that I think that forced Mel to think that she's like the elders either. And I think it's kind of leaning towards what I was saying before about the charm ones kind of having to stand on their own when it comes to either side. And I do think it was a little forced. I think it was a bit extreme for them to just kind of break up over that necessarily, as opposed to I'm mad at her right now, I don't want to talk to her sort of a deal. And I think maybe they're just building it up for the next ship I'm about to talk about. Mel and Nico. So yeah, Nico is still around and Mel definitely still has feelings for her. And I think what we saw in this episode was the back and forth, you know, them having more scenes together. And I think maybe they're building something up again and maybe Nico might get her feelings back or her memories back, who knows. But it's definitely something that is still there and Mel still has feelings for her. Are they conflicting enough for her issues with Jada? I don't think so. I, that's why I think that thing with Jada happened this episode because in all, you know, the way that it was presented was that Mel had moved on even if she did still have feelings for Nico. And what they did in this episode was make it so Jada sort of, you know, not necessarily like the person relationship so that gives Mel sort of an out when it comes to perhaps pursuing Nico again which I'm not gonna say I felt like that was contrived I'm just saying that you know they had to do that because in a way they had to do that in order for it to make sense for her to want to be with Nico because her and Jada were doing fine up to this point Maggie and Parker not much there, except, you know, Maggie is definitely afraid of losing Parker and the situation with his demonness, and he is definitely full-on blown demon right now. Macy and Galvin. I'm only bringing it up, this ship, because Macy talked about him longer than a minute this episode, because in the last couple episodes, she really rarely mentioned him, except in passing, that he just wasn't there. So he seems to be, like, not communicating at all we don't know if he's dead we don't know what happened to him and Macy is somewhat you know concerned of course you know I mean even though she's been able to function just fine she is concerned that he's not there so she's not sure what she can do about her demoness and she's also kind of worried about him which shows that you know she still cares I still don't see the passion of it but yeah definitely he went to go do something for her so I mean of course she'd be concerned Macy and Harry not much, but I will say I thought it was very telling that Macy, when they were talking about Viralis, could not concentrate because of Harry. Like, she closed the book. She straight walked away from the book and was like, I don't know how we can even focus on this with what's happening to Harry. None of, like, the other girls, you know, they care for Harry, too. And they were able, but they were able to kind of be like, well, let's figure this thing about Viralis. And Maggie, of course, wants to get the vow of blood for Parker, but... Macy was pretty much like, I can't concentrate with this thing going on with Harry, which is funny because they could have had that happen where she said something like, I can't concentrate right now because this thing is going on with Harry and Galvin is still missing. So much is happening. But they made it so she focused on the idea of what was immediately happening with Harry as opposed to her so-called boyfriend being missing for the last couple of weeks. So yeah, Hasty slow burn. <laughs> We're the charmed ones. Who are you? You tell them, Mel. Oh my gosh, I was so annoyed with the elders this episode. I was so glad Mel was like, y'all better know y'all place. My main prediction goes for Harry. I think someone planted something in Harry's psyche, deep in his subconscious, maybe that he's not even aware of, that has made him very special to Fiona's mission or whatever she's trying to get at. And maybe, of course, the Charmed Ones. And he probably doesn't even know. And Fiona is trying to get to that. Now, the question is, who planted that? What is it? And how important is it to the Charmed Ones and to Fiona? Because clearly there's something in his brain that either... Someone plans it. I don't think it was him because he doesn't seem to be aware that Fiona would need something from him, right? So I'm wondering what that is, but I definitely think someone planted something in his psyche that maybe he doesn't even know about that is holding some sort of secret that is, you know, maybe a gate or something to something really powerful that Fiona needs. I'm also starting to think that Jada is not long for this world. Unfortunately, I think this episode showed that she is very much about her mission. And I think 
in the end of it, she's going to probably have to choose between her mission and Mel. And I don't see her picking Mel so far. Or more so, maybe she might pick her mission and then at the end when she has to, like, save Mel, she ends up dying to sacrifice herself or something. Either way, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting good vibes that um, Jada's character is long for this world. Which makes me sad because I kind of ship her and her and Mel more than I ship Mel and Nico. But, yeah, they're already sowing the seeds of problems for them. Okay, so what did you think of season one, episode 17 of Charmed Surrender? Did you like it? Do you think I am right in my prediction? Do you wonder what's going on with Harry inside his mind? Do you think Maggie will be able to save Parker? Do you know what is going on with Fiona? And where is Charity right now? Because she just kind of fell off the map when she went away with Parker's dad. Oh my gosh, so much to talk about. Let me know. Comment down below with your thoughts and your theories. I love hearing from you all. And and also, be sure to subscribe so that you're the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror, dark fantasy, and dark superhero. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.